Village Green English. Everyday British English, British English every day. You are listening to the Curiosity Contest. I am Nathan, and with me is Tom. We are English teachers and the two founders of Village Green English. Every week, we are recording a podcast to find out which word of the week is better. I will argue for my word of the week, and likewise, Tom will argue for his word of the week. Ultimately, this is a matter of opinion, and the winner will be decided by your vote in the poll. V rules. So, Tom, what are the rules? Well, Nathan, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Every week, we choose a word pertaining to a topic which will be the subject of contentious debate in the podcast. The reward? A spot in the Virtual Village Museum of Lexical Curiosity. A thing must be chosen in relation to the word to symbolise the word and its journey through common language. The words and their representative artefacts will then be put forward to the community to cast their vote on their chosen victor. Hi Tom, where are you today? Hey Nathan, I'm in uh, Dubrovnik. Um, in Croatia. It's a city on the coast. It's uh, a medieval town. It's very old. It's quite small, but it's rather beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's in a, a city of fantasy. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, I know that a lot of people are big fans of uh, Game of Thrones. Um, perhaps not since the last season came out, but um, a lot of Game of Thrones was actually filmed here in Dubrovnik because it has that medieval uh, feel to it. Lots of uh, impressive stone buildings, huge stone walls, mm -hmm. lots of steps. And they're still there? I thought they were taken out by dragons. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of um, burnt wreckage from when the dragons came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, now they've done really well. They seem to have rebuilt it. It's good. My word of the week. So, Nathan, my word this week is flag. Now, what do you think of when you hear that word flag? Well, just as we're on the topic of Croatia, I think of the Croatian flag. Mm. And what a flag it is. It's quite a nice flag. Every country around the world has its national flag, which is used as a symbol of that country. Flags through history um, are an interesting thing. They sort of developed in order to um, show who somebody was. So think of medieval Europe and uh, knights, lords, uh, dukes, kings and queens going into uh, battle had to be able to show who they were so they didn't accidentally hit the wrong person in a fight. Tom, what's the term for studying flags? So the practice of studying or, or um, engaging with flags is called vexillology. The United Kingdom has its flag, the Union flag. It's sometimes called the Union Jack. Do you know why we have both of these names for it? No. So um, a jack comes from um, the Navy. So there is a thing called a jack staff, which is the pole at the front of a ship. And when, the, when there is a flag flying there, it's called a jack. Mm -hmm. And so the Union Jack became sort of the famous term for it because it was always seen on the front of um, warships and other naval vessels. Always? Because I'm pretty sure the British Navy put on a skull and crossbones when no one's looking. They definitely did at some point through history. <laughs> the sneaky, sneaky tactics um, of uh, Sir Francis Drake and other... <laughs> um, seafarers. Salty seafarers. seafarers. Salty seafarers. Um, but yeah, so that's the difference there. But the Union flag is very, very famous. Um, but we also have some more. So we have St. George's Cross, which is the flag of England. We have St. Andrew's Cross, or the, the Scottish Saltire, which is a, a blue background with a white cross on it. Um, Wales has a very famous flag, the red dragon with the white and green background. So Northern Ireland doesn't have an official flag, technically, but they have um, the Ulster Banner, which is very similar to St. George's Cross, but it has the red hand of Ulster on it, which um, I think is pretty cool. Um, another one of my favourite flags is uh, the flag of the Isle of Man. Mm. 
Can you picture that one? It's three legs trying to run, but they're all caught up in each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, this is actually a symbol which appears in um, a few different emblems from the Mediterranean. So there's a couple of Greek, ancient Greek states that use this as their emblem. It's actually called a, a, a triskelion or a triskelion. It's a quite cool word. My artifact. So a very, very famous flag, or actually possibly not a flag, because it's actually a standard. Um, Richard I was the first to um, put the three lions, which is now associated with England, um, onto his royal standard. And now the current official royal standard actually has six lions on it, because it's split into four corners, mm. four mm. Um, quarters, and the um, badge, if you like, of England, the three lions, um, appears in both the top left and bottom right corners. If you have the emblems of England in those corners, what do you think are in the other two? Is it symbols of Scotland and symbols of Wales and Northern Ireland? So it's a symbol of Scotland in the top right. It's the emblem of the royal family of the monarchy and the emblem of the scottish monarchy is a lion <laughs> so it's a, a red lion on a yellow background okay so we have seven lions so far we do we have seven lions on the flag and then the bottom left is a symbol of ireland okay so i was going to get another symbol? lion <laughs> it's not another lion it's actually a tiger <laughs> really <laughs> no um so a very famous symbol of Ireland is the harp. So the Royal Standard, the current one, um, has the emblems of England and then Scotland and Ireland. Now, I chose this because if, as a listener, if uh, you have visited the UK before and you've been to London and you've been to Buckingham Palace, um, you may or may not have seen this Royal Standard. So this Royal Standard is not always flying okay mm -hmm. it's not always um attached to a pole this royal standard shows that the queen is there oh. so in in the in the current monarch's royal residences um the places that she technically lives um so buckingham palace windsor castle sandringham um there's a, a quite a few of them up and down the country um if you see that flag flying then you know that the queen is at home and you can pop around for a cup of tea so this is the royal form of the modern share your location <laughs> yeah it's like she doesn't check in on facebook she just does this <laughs> <laughs> um great uh interestingly in scotland the royal standards is actually slightly different so it's the same standard but it's um if you go to scotland it will be shown differently and instead of having two of england's emblems it has two of scotland's one of england one of ireland hmm. um, now wales isn't represented on this because actually wales is not part of the kingdom but the union basically wales has never existed technically as a kingdom exists as a principality exactly but there has been a king of scotland so for example uh james the first of england was james the fourth of scotland and that was the mm -hmm. first time those two kingdoms were united and yeah there was a kingdom or there is a kingdom of ireland there is a title yes yeah so there isn't a um a king of ireland anymore but it's um yeah ireland existed as a kingdom as a, a client state of of england my word of the week my word of the week is gig now i've picked this word this week because i'm very excited to go see some gigs again this summer um i'm trying to pick out some festivals um i think me and tom quite keen maybe to get on the Isle of Wight festival might be quite a good one um, now this weekend I was with family driving through London and we ended up going on a detour 
because we took a wrong turn in Muswell Hill in North London, we ended up going past the venue Alexandra Palace, which is a stunning building. Um, it hosts loads of great music concerts and events. It's very big. I've seen some great concerts there. Um, but Tom, maybe you can tell me about some other events that they hold at this venue. Alexandra Palace. The only thing I do know about Alexandra Palace is that many people in Britain like to call it Ali Pali. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. One event that they hold at Alexandra Palace every year is the darts. No way. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen footage of the darts, people have an absolutely amazing time. And Alexandra Palace is like the venue for darts. That's amazing. I actually quite enjoy watching the darts. And I know that it gets to be a pretty raucous affair. Um, it's like a big German drinking hall, in yes. a way. It's like a big Bavarian hall with all these long tables. And um, the bar serves beer. <laughs> Lots of beer. And you have entertainment. Uh, about the word gig... Gig is quite a recent word in, you know, the history of words. Uh, only really started being used as slang for a music concert in the 1920s. Since then, it has evolved meaning and it can mean any job that's done on demand. Um, so you might hear nowadays people talk about the gig economy. Now, Tom, I wanted to ask you some questions around the word gig. So, Tom, what is your favourite genre of music? <laughs> That's a really difficult question to answer. Um, <clears throat> I grew up listening to Oasis. Uh, and I think they count as Brit pop. <laughs> I don't know. I think genres, for me, genres are a bit difficult um i like bands and i like artists i wouldn't really say i have any genres that i like if i had to be honest yeah it's a difficult question to answer because even a musician will play different genres mm. so i should have just asked you are you are you oasis or are you blur i like both <laughs> <laughs> What's I like um, a song I've been listening to a lot recently is uh, "Music Is My Radar" by Blur. Mm. I love that song. Good, funky tune. <laughs> well, there you go. Funk is your favorite genre. <laughs> Electro swing. Do you have a favorite gig that you've ever been to? You know, I I really have not been to many. Um, I w I went to see Bill Bailey. Mm. The comedian. Yeah. I think that that was actually really, really funny. That was in Liverpool. Um <clears throat> and I think, yeah, that counts as a gig, right? He yes. uh he's a he's a very famous English comedian, but also a musician. So he does music plays quite a large part in his uh in his set. Mm -hmm. and, and that was really funny. And can you remember any of the jokes? Well, it's interesting you ask that because I actually made a joke <laughs> at the gig. Bill Bailey said something really funny and then I said something that joined onto it, which was even funnier. And I can't, I can't, I've never been able to remember what I said. <laughs> so you had thousands of people turning up to this venue to see Bill Bailey make jokes, but more importantly, to hear you make funnier jokes. Yeah, it's just, you know, it was a quip. Quip. Uh, a witty quip. My artefact. On to my artefact. Yeah. So what is your artefact this week, Nathan? Would you like to guess? You always like to guess. I do. I do love a guessing game. So you went with gig. Um, is it a particular venue? Good Good guess, because I was going to pick Alexandra Palace. Okay. I have picked a gig by the Beatles. But I first wanted to ask you some questions about the Beatles. <laughs> okay. I know you're a big Beatles fan. Maybe even a bigger Beatles fan than I. 
Oh, I don't know about that. I have really gotten to the Beatles in the last couple of years. You've you've lived in Liverpool. You've done the dances. You've sung the I tunes. I went to school with Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> I was John Lennon's nanny for a time. <laughs> Yeah, and you were actually the original drummer, weren't you, for the Beatles? Yes, I actually played the kazoo in the. Uh... <laughs> okay, yeah. onto the onto the quiz. <laughs> onto the quiz. Tom, where was the Beatles' first gig? Was it in Hamburg, Germany? Incorrect. Ah, guess again. Their first gig. Um, well, Liverpool would be the obvious answer. Is it in Liverpool somewhere? It's around Liverpool. Okay, because again, another venue very famously associated with the Beatles is the Cavern Club. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess that wasn't their first gig. See, that's the guess I thought you were going to go for. But I have, right. a, I have a stat for you. The Beatles okay. played the Cavern Club... 292 times. Wow. It's, it almost sounds like a football player playing for a team. 292 mm. appearances wow. at the Cavern Club. <clears throat> That's a lot. So, yeah. in fact, the first place was the Litherland Town Hall. So, it's, uh, yeah, so it's north, north of Liverpool. This brings me to my artifact. Tom, what <laughs> was the Beatles' last gig? Um, what was their last gig? Or was it the one uh, in the video of Get Back where they're on the roof? You got it. Is it actually? <laughs> so, for some reason, that sticks in my mind. I think somebody told me that that was their last gig. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be argued that actually that was the most iconic gig. Because, well, it's the final. And mm -hmm. by this point, you know, all the Beatles had started to do their own things um they looked very different from when they all wore the same suits and wore the same haircut mm -hmm. they're all disheveled men with beards mm -hmm. wearing their um ladies coats <laughs> the story goes it was so cold and windy on the rooftop that george harrison Ha always had a lit cigarette on the go to warm his hands. <laughs> um, yeah, and actually, it took them a, a while to, to choose the location. Um, they actually considered playing a 2,000-year-old Roman amphitheater in Tunisia. Wow. The idea, the director says, is that they'd start at dawn... And then you'd see, like, crowds of fans running to see them throughout the day. But they decided not to do that. That's a shame. I think that would have been pretty cool. This gig got parodied by The Simpsons. Can you remember? Oh, uh, yeah. So there's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer forms Homer... His... <laughs> Go on. Homer, they have a band. Is it an acapella band? Acapella crooner music. The, which the is B another sharps? good genre. The B sharps, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where do they play? They play on the rooftop oh, of The Quickie Mart. <laughs> so I'm glad I researched this because I actually put this in my notes. And it's not. It's most tavern. Oh yeah. But Apu was in the band. Apu Barney, Grumble, and it's Homer, Skinner, Apu, and Barney. No mo. They're a, they're a barbershop quartet. Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thanks for listening. Please do follow the link to the website where you can vote for the winner of this week's Curiosity Contest. You can also find extra materials for this episode and a whole lot more. On the website, you will be able to sign up for lessons with me or Nathan, and that includes small group classes, private tuition, and our courses. Also, 
Join the Discord community for topical discussions, games, and social events. Village Green English. Everyday British English. British English every day. Excuse me. Yes. Do you know what music you're listening to? No, I don't. You don't? No. You don't recognise it at all? Well, that's it's possibly the Beatles. That's right. It's the Beatles. Really?